So to our fifth match this afternoon, and what a prospect it is. It is the Olympic champions, Marcus Guido and Hendra Setiawan of Indonesia, up against the defending champions here of the All England, Matthias Bo and Karsten Morgensen. So, the Indonesians, this probably the one major that's eluded them so far. Of course, the Olympic champions in Beijing, Asian Games gold medalists in Guangzhou in 2010, and of course, world champions in Kuala Lumpur in 2007. What a glittering career they've had. But let's look at the Danish combination of oh, Matthias Bo, the left-hander, and Karsten Mogensen. Matthias Bo, 31 years of age, Mogensen 28, number three seeds this year. But trying to reach their third consecutive All England final because not only did they win the title a year ago, but they were also beaten finalists in 2010, lost to their teammates Lars Porska and Jonas Rasmussen. Three and one, their win loss record for the year. And if it hadn't have been for their team competition results, it'd be one and one because they only got through one round of the Korean Open. They've only played one individual tournament so far in 2012. And there you can see that they are number three seeds. They were incidentally number one in the world, had 32 weeks holding that top spot from November 2010 until the end of June last year. So former world number ones current All England champions, but never European champions. Twice silver medalists at the European Championships. So to their opponents, well, as I say, they've won virtually everything there is to win in World Badminton. Marcus Kido and Hendra Setiawan. But of course, Ventilius. Bo and Karsten Mogensen, very convincing first round against Chen Hungling and Lin Yulang from Taipei. So an easy first round victory for the Danes, and just as easy and convincing was the first round match for Marcus Kido and Hendra Setiawan. Because they beat Bosch and Rida from the Netherlands, 21-16, 21-15 in 26 minutes. World ranking at the moment is down to nine, and that's surprising for current Olympic champions. Nine and three, their win-loss record for the year. A couple of quarterfinals, Malaysian Super Series and also the German Grand Prix last week. Lost out last week to Hong Wei and Shen Ye, who of course went on to take that German Open title. As I say, convincing 26 minutes for that victory yesterday against the pair from the Netherlands. But never have they won the All England title, never actually even been in the final of the All England Championships, which to me is a surprising statistic. Our on par for this match is Malcolm Bannon of England. Very experienced umpire he is too. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Marcus Kiddo, Henry Satawa, Indonesia. On my left, Matthias Bo, Carsten Mogensen, Denmark. Marcus Kiddo to serve to Matthias Bo. Love all. Play. So the reigning Olympic champions from Indonesia. No, well, not even secure of qualifying for defending their Olympic title at the moment as they stand at number nine in the world rankings. And certainly, if they were to win this encounter, it would be a big step towards qualifying for London 2012. Of course, three Indonesian men's doubles pairs right up there in the top ten in the world. Hey! 
Now this, of course, is the sixth meeting between these two pairs. Two, one. And of the previous five, the Indonesians have only won once. That was last year in the quarter-final of their own home Super Series event, also a premier, the Indonesian Open. One in two straight games, but with home support, and I suspect that made Six a big over. difference. Two, off. Initially indicating in, and then changed his mind and said it was out. I think in the end came to the right decision. Yep, indeed. Pushed it wide. Five, two. And the Indonesians, Anthony, Three, in all five. honesty, aren't the sort of force that they were when they won that Olympic title in Beijing. They've been beset with injury problems, knee problems to both players. Marcus Kido suffering from high blood pressure, missed the World Championships last year because he picked up typhoid. You know, and I think that because they haven't, they've always been struggling with injury problems and so on, they haven't really had a good run to build their confidence. I think a big part of it as well is the fact that they're not actually at the national centre anymore. I think they play for their own individual club, so they're not training every day with the national squad players. Um, but when you've been around and done what they've done in their careers, it must be very, very difficult to always keep that um, urgency and wanting to win all the time. You know, they're such relaxed players anyway. And I think that when they have obviously that drop in training, um, to produce their best all the time is very, very difficult. Yes, I think that's a very fair point because after the Southeast Asian Games in 2009, Marcus Guido and Hendra Setia won, resigned from PBSI, their national federation. As you say, now represent the Jayaraya Club in Jakarta. But, you know, I. I look at them play, I think their laid-back style is just their personalities coming through. A lot of people watch them and sort of saying, are they really trying? They don't seem to be putting in the effort. They are. They desperately want to win, but it's just their personalities. They are very laid-back on court. I think they're what you would call the last kind of pair of their generation that can play in that way. A lot of the younger players that play now play with a lot of speed, a lot of power, a lot of urgency around the court. And although it's great to watch the speed and the power, I also like to see you know the real technical aspects that Marcus Kido and Setiran bring to the table. They play with a lot of skill and a lot of heart, and it's nice to see that. Couldn't agree more. And of course, I. I sung the praises for years about Hendra Setiawan because I believe that you know when they were number one in the world when they won their Olympic title world title I thought he was the best front court player in world badminton I thought he could read the game like a book he was always in the right place at the right time and never ever seemed to be moving quickly he was just there you know, great players, that's what they do, isn't it? They just seem to float round the court. They do everything that the rule book says don't do, in a way. And they just have their own style and their own freedom. And unfortunately, at the moment, I don't think they train as hard as perhaps they did when they went on to win Olympic Games. And uh, it kind of shows when they're out there, because trying to play with that kind of skill and finesse, you need the speed as well to be able to implement that. And that's the thing that they're probably lacking more so now. It's pushed long, so we'll go to the mid-game interval. The defending champions with a four-point advantage. And just to really emphasize your point, Anthony, they left the National Training Center 
because Marcus Guido said the training's too hard. The training is giving me more and more injury problems. And because of the intensity of the training, that's why they left. But do you think that they've perhaps gone a little too much the other way? Yeah, yeah. I think it's very difficult when you've won what they have to always stay motivated to want to train as hard as they were doing. You know, they've been doing it for possibly 10, 15 years. And it does get to a point where you just think, I don't want to put my body through that kind of pressure every day. I want to enjoy this sport. I'd like to go out with a bang. And I think that's kind of what they're doing. I think this is definitely for their last year on the tour. Um, and they're just trying to maximise their time out here. I think it, personally, I, I miss them terribly from the tour because I love watching them play. After all, they're only both 27 years of age. I mean, you think of of 11, players seven. now. There's a number of players. One well, in the adjoining courts is Jonas Rasmussen. He's 34 years of age. Uh, you know, it is a sport of even Matthias Bo. He's 31. You know, you can still play. Now that the scoring has changed, I think it's easier to keep longevity in the sport because it isn't as physically demanding as it used to be. Definitely. I mean, I retired from the sport at the age of 34. But what I would say about probably the Asian countries is they're probably a lot better from a lot younger age. Yes. So their, their time on the tour is probably a lot longer than a European player would ever be. Um, and the kind of training that they put their bodies through on daily, you know, six days a week, six hours every single day, real physical training. And it tell you know, it is its toll. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Very good point. Well, just two points in it. Right. Now, two. Danish players, uh, notorious for appearing to be ready and then not being ready. No, Malcolm Bannon, the no. rampart, having a very quick well, word with nine. Matthias Bo. I think the two Danish guys are probably what I would consider the best match players in the world. They know when to turn it on, they know when to take pauses and uh, can frustrate opponents and they are the best at that, no question. Yeah, I think, I personally think there's a very fine line between uh, sensible tactics and gamesmanship. And I think we'll leave it at that. Service over. 10.30. Ten, four. Oh, that's well taken. That's where he's at his best. Matthias Bo at the net. Fourteen. They're so good, the Danish pair in the in the drive and flat game. They don't want to play an open game of you know lots of smashes, lots of defending. They want to keep the shot very flat all the time. And Matthias Bo is probably. A, up there with the top players around the world at the net. He's so sharp, especially being left-handed. Actually, a lot of shots sit up for him nicely. There's no question of that. I think that he, too, his reading of the game at the front of the court is 11, absolutely 14. superb. I think he's got a real weakness in his defence. And I, I don't understand why more pairs don't exploit it. To me, he looks awkward in his defence. He doesn't look relaxed. Look at that. You know, he gets all tangled up. He's not sure whether to defend forehand or backhand. And that's probably why they like attacking, because they don't, they feel uneasy in that defensive stance. Definitely. I mean, I've, again, I've seen Cast and uh, Mateus training um, and they do a lot of physical training on the defense you know, they have a Chinese coach who will feed shuttles to them all day long on that defensive area and even with that like you say Jill he's definitely his weakest area of his game and you're absolutely right that's why they adopt the tactic of never lifting and giving away the attack I mean it takes a lot of skill to be able to implement that kind of tactics that you don't have to give the attack away. That's a real credit to Carsten Mogensen. His ability to not lift and put his partner under pressure is, in, is incredible. I mean, he's been a talent from a very, very young age. He's got a risk to die for. I mean, he's not exactly the tallest, you know, most powerful player in the world, but... No, he's very slight. His leg power 15, and his wrist strength, and just all-round game, incredibly powerful guy. Yeah, shuttle deflected by the net court, that's why he was unable to return that. Hey. 
over. 16-13. Service over. Fourteen sixty. Very good too. Talking of the ability 15, to keep 16. the shuttle flat over the net. Virtually no backswing of the racket there. Still generated the power in the Rasetia one. Oh. Oh. 16 all. Well, back level. Such a smooth badminton player, Hendra Setia one. Just produces power out of nowhere. It really is you know, a silky kind of player. Yeah. Variation on the power of the attack there, 17, just taking the pace 16. off a little. Marcus Kido. the Danes the Indonesians as well don't like to give the lift away they very much when they won the Olympics in Beijing hardly ever lifted the shuttle they play with so much skill it's it's impressive to watch but slightly overdid it on that one 18 17 well, that is a magnificent flick serve completely deceiving Marcus Kido, he looks towards the service judge, but no call. Nineteen seventeen. Well, he wasn't going to be fooled a second time. That was a very rushed serve. He uh, 18, literally walked 19. up to the line and yes. the opponent automatically knows you're going to flick when you do it that quick. Good return of serve. Down the centre of the court, narrows the angle of reply, and therefore more chance for him intercepting the next one. Good thinking from Matthias Bo. Two game point opportunities. Take it on their first. 21 18. The defending champions. First game run by Matthias Bo. And Carsten Mogerson, 21-18. Close game in the scoreline. But in pretty quick time. 21-18 in the scoreline. 14 minutes of play. Jeg <laughs> Altså den der modtagning måske, hvis ja. vi kan lægge den lidt længere ud, ja. så de ikke bare kan fit den herfra og lægge den ned. Kajsen, lige præcis. Ja. Prøv lige at i defensiven. 
vi skal lige huske på defensiven, at når de hakker hårdt, Kito, når han hakker hårdt, bare giv ham en enkelt tur mere dernede, bare ligesom variation. Eller holde den kort lige. Eller holde den kort lige, lige præcis, fordi det er ikke selv, at han vil have en fart på den. Hvis I giver den fart, så skal den langs med linjen, og så skal I rykke på den næste, fordi det kan ikke lige at få den ned i fødderne, det ved vi. Klaus og Poulsen, the Danish coach, is animated as always. Well, court one, 20 seconds. Court one, 20 seconds. With Sigurd Pemungas, their coach from the Jaya Raya Club. Second game. Love all. Play. It's interesting to me, Anthony, these two pairs. You think of, you know, what we watched earlier on in the day, the first of our matches today, men's doubles, where we had two pairs that really were very comfortable in every place on the court, whether they were going forward, whether they're at the back. Whereas I really think we've got two pairs here that very much have their favoured formation. Definitely agree. You know, Carsten Mogensen is always the rear court player. Yep. And uh, he will very, very rarely come to the net. But that's what's very clever about that partnership. They know what their strengths are. They try and get it the right way around every single time. And it's why they've gone on to become you know, potentially one of the best players in the world. Phenomenal from Marcus Guido. That's the kind of play that took them to Olympic gold. Marcus Guido is such a deceptive player over there. He's got everything. He's got the stop drop. He's got the big smash. And for a little guy, can actually get very, very high off the ground. So he's devastating from the back of the court. Yeah, he's only 165. That's five foot five. Both the Danes over six foot tall. the nature of both of these pairs trying to keep it very very close in and around the net nobody wants to give away the lift and uh, this is the way they will play against every pair that they ever come across and Marcus Kido and Hendra Setiwan literally do not ever change the game that they play no matter who it is they're playing they always want that no lift game so it's all coming fast through the flat game and that's what they love just like that yeah. Very quiet, modest man is Hendra Setiawan. Interesting that he's been playing mixed doubles here with Vita Marissa. Yeah, he's played a bit of mixed over the last couple of years, which is very unusual. He never ever, until say, the last couple of years, ventured out onto the mixed court. But he's a guy that's got so much skill and control that had he actually played mix from a very young age, would have been a very, very dangerous player. He would be an opponent's worst nightmare, to be honest. Oh, 
Well, he's always adventurous, and they're going for something that was just a little too ambitious. That's definitely uh, the case of Marcus Kido. He, he, can, he will literally try absolutely any shot he can think of, and that what often is his undoing. Strength points from Baines. Make that five. Super. Carsten Mogensen definitely has what I would consider the best backhand in the world. Of such a small swing, the power he can generate almost hits it as hard as most people can hit their forehand smash, which is unbelievable. My goodness, how on earth did he get that back? A little bit of showboating going on from the Indonesians Nine there, but... Five. Oh, that's extraordinary. Yeah, as you say, he got him no advantage, but... It's always nice when one of those goes off for a winner. That can fill you with all sorts of confidence. Hey. So well, the run of points comes to an end, but those six straight points have put a very different complexion six, on this second game. outrageous from Marcus Kido. He's definitely the only player in the world that can play shots like that. He's probably the only player in the world who would even dream of playing shots like that, but when it comes off, you just think, how on earth can he do that? Yeah. Well, not only back level, now into the lead. Ten, nine. That's the great thing about this Indonesian pair. When they are on form, and obviously when they're training a bit harder perhaps and physically moving around the court, literally unplayable because of ability to be able to do things like that. Marcus Kido playing his partner into difficulty there by lifting cross court. Ten all. Short. Oh, he's got it back. Oh, oh he's missed it. Would you believe it? So it's the defending champions, Matthias Bow and Carsten Morgensen, who go to the mid-game interval with the advantage. But there's just one point in it. Frustration. Marcus Kido. <laughs> Og så når I sær os selv det her, vi skal stadig have svipperne med, men når I sær os selv, når du gerne går frem og dumpe, som vi gør der på den der. Er du med? Ja. Jeg har på korterne med her. 
Well, do the Indonesians have any answers left? I wonder if it's significant, 11, Anthony, that last year was the first time since 2004 they hadn't won at least one major title in a year. Beginning of the end, maybe? I think so. I think a lot of what they're doing out these uh, these days is, is trying to have fun, of course. They're obviously making good money from still playing. But, uh, you know, when you've been an Olympic champion, very, very difficult to keep doing all the, the right things. I think this perhaps a sign of their attitude going for the trick shot round the back. Not the sort of intensity that will win these big matches. And it, I suppose it does all come down to desire, doesn't it? How much do they want it? How much do they want to put themselves through in preparation for these big events? It's gone wide. I mean, the crazy thing with a pair like Kidas and Setiawan is that if they do qualify for the Olympics, you know they will be dangerous. Yep. You know they will get up for that one last tournament, perhaps, and, and really go for the gold medal. They certainly want to, won't want to go there and, and not sort of win the gold again. So they could be very, very dangerous. But at the moment, they're in danger of not qualifying. 13, yeah. 11. Please. Flick serve is long of the double service line. 12, 13. It's a definite tactic of the Danes, though, to flick Kido off the net. They've used it a lot of time so far. That's gone long, and once again, 13, we're back level. Oh. And now into the lead. Absolutely fantastic reactions from Setiawa. The return was really, really good, and he read that incredibly well and was able to get the net cord, and it was bobbling around. And... Yes. Save it's over. Fourteen or fifteen. Oh. Oh, going for another outrageous shot, outrageous angle that he attempted. Fifteen off. seemed to me that there was a gap straight down the line. Yep. It is nice to see him play like that, though. He play with real flair and skill, and, you know, you can tell he thoroughly enjoys the way he plays his badminton, and so the, he played like this when he went on to win gold medal at the Olympic Games, so you can't really question the way he plays, you know, and uh, it kind of is a bit of the Indonesian way. They're all very, very skillful players, and uh, they let you know that from early on in the match. Yeah. This is the sort of time where the Danish players are very, very good. 50, oh. Closing out a match is what they do very, very well, and I would say this pair are particularly good at that. Out. Low serve is short. 16, 50. And that's a gifted point to the Indonesians. 13, 12. Oh, what a net shot from Matthias Bo. 60. Oh. 
It's the confidence to play that shot when you know your opponent is standing very, very close to the net. That takes real courage and an actual technical skill to be able to play a shot that tight to the net. That's a good ball. 60. Time from Marcus Kido. And that Eight, could prove 10, very 16. costly indeed. at these latter stages that we really do see and test the desire of the Indonesians. Absolutely. They're, they're capable of winning four points straight away here. Yeah. Well, not when there's a neck cord off the return of serve. Makes it awfully difficult and the time is running out for the Indonesians. the error I'm good in there. Start. and it means that the defending champions Matthias Bowen, Karsten Mogensen on the verge of victory in this second round encounter and Danish fans there absolutely delighted with their players three match points match point opportunity and it's converted by the number three seeds Matthias Bowl and Carsten Mogensen well it was always going to be a tricky encounter when you play against Olympic champions but the Indonesians sadly not reproducing the form that took that, them to that Olympic gold medal but they did push the Danes, the defending champions, awfully close. 21-18, 21-17, the margin of victory, and they're safely through to the quarter-final. They'll be pretty happy with that. So they're safely through to the quarterfinals and they will be playing against a Chinese opposition in the form of the number five seeds Chai Biao and Guo Zhengdong who defeated their teammates in two straight games. So as they sign autographs, the Danes mighty happy with that performance of course plenty of action to come tomorrow but Martinez Boat will take his leave because that is a great performance against the Olympic champions and they will rest easy tonight when they're through to the quarter final
Well, with the Danes winning that men's doubles, that concludes our second round action for today. We started with men's doubles and the number two seeds, Jung Jae Sung and Yi Lee Yong Dae, overcoming Adcock and Ellis from England. Then we had women's doubles and the world silver medalists defeating the world bronze medalists, Tian Ching and Zhao Yunlei against Gutta and Ponapa of India. Then, of course, Lee Chong Wei, well, he had a right royal battle against Hans Christian Wittinghus, pushed the full distance in the opening game, but winning through in two straight. Then Wang Shoshian in a repeat of last year's final overcame Hiroshi of Japan. And as we've just witnessed, of course, the defending champions in the men's doubles, Matthias Bo and Karsten Mogensen, overcame the Olympic champions in two straight games. Well, of course, that is it for today from the National Indoor Arena here in Birmingham. We will be back tomorrow with all the quarterfinal action. Do join us for that. That's 1400 GMT. Hope to see you tomorrow. But in the meantime, from all of us here, especially from Anthony Clark and myself, Jill Clark, see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.